This video is going to look at how to launch a ServiceNow flow from an ATF test. Um, I have an article on my uh, website, incident.do, uh, outlining the steps to do this. So we're basically just going to be following these steps and uh, I'll give some color commentary along the way. And I actually already have it configured. So we're just going to be kind of looking at the different uh, pieces of this. Um, so I guess first would be the why. Why would you want to launch a flow from an ATF test? Um, if you have something like a scheduled flow um, that doesn't launch when a record gets changed or whatever, that uh, this might be a useful use case for this. Um, you could also use this to launch uh, subflows. Uh, so that would be a possibility. Um, although I don't specifically mention how to do that, I will talk about uh, what you would need to add or modify in order to launch a subflow in here. Um, so I think those are the two main use cases uh, that you might uh, use for uh, that you that you might it might be useful to launch a flow from an ATF test. All right, let's get down to business here. So the first step is to create a step configuration. And I mentioned that I created that in the global scope. So let me zoom in just a tad here. Let's go up to 110 and we'll go into ATF. And we can see it is under administration, step configurations. So a step configuration in ATF is like a basically a custom step. Uh, it's, it's the equivalent of a custom action and flow designer is sort of, sort of the same idea. Um, so I have my custom step here, or I should say my my uh, step configuration here. I, it's called launch flow. Um, so it is a step environment. It is a server uh, step. And right there's server independent and server rest. I th think there's a possibility of doing client as well. I uh, have to look into that. Uh, the category. So this is the category that it's going to appear under when we add this step in the actual test. We'll take a look at that in a minute. The template reminder, to be honest, I'm not really sure what that's for. Uh, I just put I repeated launch flow, HTML description. I just throw a launch flow in there. Order. This is what appears um, in the uh, when we're adding a step. And we'll look at that in a second. It's a long, it goes along with works with category. Uh, okay, so now the more important stuff and description generation script. So this is just uh, when you're doing an ATF test uh, and you add a step, it auto generates a description. And so this is what is going to uh, the description that it's going to um, auto generate. And then the most important piece all the way down here is our code for launching the actual flow. So to get this code, um, as you probably know, if you were to go into the flow and let's see, do I have that up somewhere? No, I don't. So let's fire up the flow designer. Or uh, now it's known as Workflow Studio, I think. OK. And I go into the test flow. This is the one I want to launch. And so you go into the create code snippet. And so this is a, a scheduled flow. So there isn't any input. Uh, it just runs. And so all I need to do is, is copy this thing. Uh, but if we were to want to launch a subflow or a flow that depends on that triggers from a record like this other test flow I have from incidents, if I do flow uh, create code snippet, then I go in here and notice there's this inputs uh, object that needs to be filled. So um, usually what we're going to do is so if we were doing this, and this would be the same if it were a subflow, you'd also have this input subject. So you would have to feed it a record. Um, and that record would have to be something that was uh, inserted probably in a previous step or updated in a previous step in your ATS test. Um, and you would put that in there. Um, so in this case, we're just using a simple uh, scheduled flow, so there's no input. Uh, we just launch the flow. 
Okay. So we're back here. So basically all this is doing up here is it's getting the name of the flow. Uh, because when you launch it, you need to launch it by the full name, uh, the like fully qualified name, basically the scope dot the flow name. And that's the, uh, I think they call it the internal name. Yeah. Internal name. Uh, so that provides that full name, and then all this does is just calls the flow API and uh, calls it in the foreground, so dot run. And then it just uh, tells ATF uh, that once once this is done, because this is running synchronously, right, in foreground, so it's going to wait till the flow finishes, and then it'll go to the next command here. And uh, that's just saying step result set success, meaning uh, that the, the flow finished. Uh, yeah, the flow finished running. Okay, so that's our step. Um, so now we would go and create a test. So if we go ATF and we go tests. And so I have this flow test. And so the flow test, I actually, so the, the uh, step configuration, I put that in the global scope. This actual flow, I put it in the scope that the application is in, uh, the same scope, so you avoid those kind of cross-scope uh, errors. So I'm going to switch to that now. This is just in a, in a scope called uh, example-app. Uh, so I create my new test. I leave all the defaults, and I just uh, I fire up my first test step. So I already have it here, but I will take a look at this. So when we created that um launch flow step configuration remember we put it in the server category so a server category and i put order 3000 so that must be pretty close to the bottom here uh these other ones check out shopping cart and they, they must have a higher order so 3000 ended up here uh, but that's what those categories and the order is for in the step configuration form so here i have the launch flow um and just going to here because I already have it. Okay, so launch flow, uh, and then I were to, I have to, oh, sorry, you know what, I missed a step. Let's go back, uh, see, that's what happens when I don't follow the uh, instructions. So uh, number two is to add an input variable to the step configuration. <clears throat> so let's head back to that step configuration. Um, yeah, this one is okay. We'll go back to the global scope. Um, so right. I gave you a whole spiel about the script and then on the bottom, we have to add an input variable. So I'm not in the right scope. Uh, the button's not appearing for me. Here, I'll just do that. Okay, so we go to the bottom, and uh, I'm still not in the right scope because I did that thing. It's probably not going to cooperate. Ah, I did. Okay, so you would just do new over here, new input variable. And my input variable is going to be a type reference. I'm going to call it flow, and this is very important to have the same name. Uh, flow so that the column name is u underscore flow because we're in the global scope. So u underscore flow. Uh, and then my reference is going to be the flow table, which is you got to start typing this in sys hub flow. And we can see it's this table right here. And then so I uh, narrow this down, but you don't have to do this. I use a reference qualifier flow type is flow. But if you were going to do subflows in here, you, obviously this would uh, kind of uh, prevent you from doing that. So uh, I, I put flow type as flow just so it narrows it down because there are both flows and subflows in that syshub flow table. Um, so I have that. But if you're again, if you're going to do subflows, you can just forget about this uh, and just you know give it everything. Um, okay. So let's just look at, uh, okay, why is it important that this is called uflow? Because when we're in the script over here, 
we are getting the input. We're getting the name of the flow by looking at the inputs dot u flow. And we're dot walking over to the syscope table and then to the scope name. And then again, the u flow um, column, we're dot walking over to the, uh, or, um, actually, no, not dot walking. This is just the actual um, column name on the flow table, internal name, get display value. So that's why the u underscore flow is important to keep that same name. OK, back on track here. So we created the input variable. So now we go back to the ATF test. We create the test, and we launch, we create the first step in there. So we head back over to here to our test step. Um, or here, let, let me just, let's back up a little bit to, let's go back to our test. Okay. And then we're going to head into this, uh, test step launch flow, but let's switch back to our, uh, scope. Okay. So now we're going to do, uh, we're going to do add, add a step and it's going to be the launch flow step. We looked at that before. And so now this is where the input variable comes into play, right? So this is where I can select uh, any flow here. And this list is narrowed down to just flows. You can see up here, syshub flow list. Uh, these are just flows. And I just picked the first one because I had this test flow laying around for this video. Um, so I picked that. Simple as that. Update. <clears throat> and we're good. That's in here. So now I can run this test. And I will actually do a debug. Um, so that we can see that the flow actually launched. Uh, and yeah, let's, okay, so we'll do debug test. And I want to pause before rollback so that it <clears throat> stops. Okay, that succeeded. So now let's head over to our flow. And so what this all this flow is doing is it's looking up records in a table. And it's updating each of them, uh, updating each of them. So I can go to executions, and here's my execution. Um, okay, I have the uh, reporting turned off, I guess. So I think we probably won't be able to see that. Oh, no. Yeah, I have the reporting turned off. But uh, we can see the darn thing ran. Uh, and if you were to go to the table that it's running on, uh, let's go, let's go take a look at that. It did what it was supposed to do, which is it updates one of the fields, um, in that table. And there's only one record in there. So it changes the status to test, right? Um, so let's go back to our flow and I will continue so that it rolls back the changes. And if I go back to my table, we'll see that it rolled back. It is no longer test. It's some other junk I was playing around with. Um, so that's a very simple uh, step configuration to be able to launch a, a flow or a subflow um, in an ATF test. I will just mention one more thing, and that is the subflow bit. Um, so if we were launching a subflow instead of a flow, let's go back to our step configuration. And so you'd probably want to have another um, to step config. Yeah, this one. Another uh, step configuration called launch subflow is probably what you'd want. And it would be the exact same thing, except when you're in this execution script um, down here, you're going to put, uh, you're going to have the input block right here. So you're going to have that input uh, object and you're going to have to pass a record into that uh, input object. So that's going to have to be a record from a previous step. Uh, so for that, you'd have, you, you'd have to go around in here. You can see they give you some examples of how to retrieve records from previous steps. Um, you would do it that way. So uh, that's how you do it. Thanks for watching.